the Ricardian theory of comparative cost assumed that labor is the only factor of production that influences production. This might not be true. Hence, in 1919, a Swedish economist by the name E. Heckscher brought some alternative explanation to the theory of comparative cost. Later, Bertil Olin, a student of Heckscher, brought further improvement in Heckscher's work, thus giving rise to the Heckscher-Olin theory. Unlike the classical theories of trade, the Heckscher-Olin theory shows us why cost differences occur between two regions. This theory is also called as the factor endowment theory. Factor endowment refers to the capacity and ability of the factor inputs to produce outputs. The theory agrees with comparative cost theory given by David Ricardo. However, it states that the difference in cost arises due to two reasons. First, the region's factor endowments and second, the factor proportions. Heckscher-Olin theory states that countries should only produce those products in which they have abundant factor production. What this means is that the countries which have abundance of capital should produce capital-intensive products and the countries which have abundance of labor should produce labor-intensive products. Here we are dealing with only two factors, labor and capital. But we can show the same with more than two factors as well. So now, let us keep things simple. Let us assume two countries, India and the USA. India is a labor-intensive country and USA is a capital-intensive country. We take two commodities, rice and car. This is the isoquant of India for producing certain level of rice and this is the isoquant for the US for producing certain level of car. This is the factor price line for India and this is the factor price line for the US. The point to tangency shows the optimal level of output each country should opt to produce. Now see, India needs OQ of labor and OR of capital to produce 1000 kgs of rice, whereas the US requires OM units of capital and ON units of labor to produce 5 cars. If India were to produce 5 cars, then it will have to significantly increase its budget to do so, something it can't afford. And if the US wants to produce rice, then the opportunity cost of not producing cars will be very high. With all this drama, all that Heckscher and Olin wanted to say was that, listen, if you have capital in abundance, then produce capital intensive goods. And if you have labor in abundance, then produce labor intensive goods. This way, their factor price line will look like this. This is because both the countries will act like a single country when they completely depend on one another for the other commodity. As the factor price line has gone up for both the countries, 
it will move them on a higher isoquant. This showcases that both the countries will enjoy higher units of cars and rice. The HO theory is based on certain assumptions. These assumptions are the model has two countries, two commodities and two factors. There is full employment in both countries. There is no transportation cost. Perfect competition exists in both product and factor markets. And there is free trade in both economies. Let us understand factor abundance. The theory states that the differences in factor endowments lead to trade between two countries. This means that some countries will have labor in abundance and some countries will have capital in abundance. The abundance in factors can be shown through the following criteria. The above criteria tells us that if the ratio of capital to labor in country 1 is greater than the ratio of capital to labor in country 2, then we deduce that country 1 is capital abundant. This criteria is called physical criteria. Similarly, if the price of capital to labor ratio is greater for country 1 to that of country 2, then we say that country 1 is capital abundant. This criteria is called as the price criteria. Now let us understand factor intensity. Factor intensity shows the number of units of capital required per unit of labor to produce a particular commodity. We can best understand this by the following schedule. As we can see that the ratio for commodity A is greater than that of commodity B and hence we can say that the commodity A is capital intensive and commodity B is labor intensive. Here we need to understand that the absolute quantities are not to be considered. Capital is abundant in commodity B that is 10 but the ratio is lesser than that of A. Thus, we consider commodity B to be labor intensive. I would also like to point out an interesting fact to you all. An American economist, Wesley Leontief, tried to test the heckscher olin theory. However, he found out that most of the capital intensive countries in the world exported labor intensive products which is a clear contradiction to the Eto theory. This came to be known as the Leontief paradox and a major criticism to the Eto theory. I hope you liked the video. If you did, then please share it with your friends. And if not, mention it in the comments how the Saga Route channel can improve itself. Until then, adios, hasta la vista.